say. <laughs> Jessica's joined. Jessica, you there? Hey, this works. This is weird. I can see you over there typing. Turn around. Outlast 2 is a game that I really wanted to love. Truly, I did. The original Outlast is one of my favorite horror games of all time, and the DLC Whistleblower is just as good, if not better, than the original game. So needless to say, I was super excited for the second game. Outlast 2 is a weird game. It's really, really good, and really, really bad at the same time. Like I said, that might sound a little weird, but you'll see what I mean. First off, let's start off with the positives. The game looks really good. You have to give it that. Even though 99% of the game is played in the dark, you can still tell just how great the surrounding looks, and the d attention to detail in the game is really strong as well. To me, the game looks best during the flashback sequences of the game. The school looks bright and beautiful, yet at the same time, it's creepy as shit. It gives you the feeling that you're going to open the door and be greeted by the librarian eating a child or something like that. The sound design in this game is spot on as well. Being able to hear footsteps of the batshit crazy hillbillies and crazy Christians really adds to the suspense of the game. And walking through water, mud, and giant mounds of dead babies truly just sounds fantastic. Oh, hey girl. Red Rap. The babies! Oh my god, that one's heads on backwards. The moments that take place in the school are where the game really shines. Like I just said, the game looks best in these moments, but these moments are also the creepiest and most suspenseful of the game. Walking around the deserted school, following the ghost of Jessica around, and trying to figure out what she wanted is truly interesting, and I wish they spent more time on these segments of the game. With each segment, you learn more and more about what is going on with Jessica until you finally put all the pieces of the puzzle together towards the end. Jessica, I am assuming, is being molested and beaten by the priests of her Catholic school, and one day Jessica asked Ethan to stay with her and not to leave her alone with the priest. 
Ethan decided to leave because the priest wanted him to, not knowing what was happening to Jessica. All of these terrible things and the top up on Jessica and eat away at her so much until she hung herself. And Ethan blames himself for her death. All of these parts are what truly makes the game creepy, and I felt uneasy playing them. Sorry, we... What are the two of you doing in here? I'm sorry, Father Loudermilt. We stayed after school for a journal? We were just leaving. Let's step back into class, please. Blake? You're not in trouble yet, Blake. What the fuck's on your face? You're not in trouble, do you? Just stay with me. I want you two to tell me what you were doing in here. Were you we were making me? love. Do I need to call your parents? Go for it. Jessica, do I need to call your father again? No, please. I only want us to be friends. Dude, Nobody's what the fuck's on your you. face, bro? Does one of you think you can make this right? Jessica? Jessica, look at me. Will you pray with me? Will you pray with me? <laughs> Will you pray with me? Why don't you go along home, Blake? I'm uh playing Outlast too. Did I interrupt something? Zach. It wasn't like that. Then what did you want? You won't say? No. Shame is a gift from God. Oh. To let you know right from wrong. And yes. What is very wrong. Let me go home now. Go home and pray. I'll get right on that. I want you to stay. Blake, please. This is awkward enough. What's awkward about this? Matter, but I need you to leave us. Don't. Don't. Listen. Everything you child you diddler. You can leave, young man. Nah. Walk away. I'm gonna stay. You're gonna. Oh. Let's get the fuck out of here. Listen to those little feet. I'm coming. I knew you was a diddler. Towards the end of the game, you actually realize Holy that shit. she wasn't she did not hang herself, but that the priest pushed her down the stairs and killed her and then made it look like she hung herself. Unfortunately, most of the game is spent outside in the woods dodging crazy Christians, crazy farmers, and these weird ass people called the heretics. It's truly a shame because the school segments were so great. Now it's time for the areas of the game where the game really just fell flat. First of all, it's a horror game. And to be honest, it wasn't really that scary. There were maybe one or two moments that caught me off guard. But most of it was 100% predictable or flat out just not scary. I feel that the first game was, had actually scary moments. Sure it wasn't perfect, but I actually got kind of scared at times. Alright, now it's time for me to go on a bit of a rant here. So sit down and buckle up, because I'm about to go off on this fucking game. What in the fuck were you thinking with this game? So many fucking times you have to run from an enemy it is so unclear where you're supposed to go that you spend half the game dying over and over and over again trying to figure out where the flying fuck the developers want you to go you'll die and you'll die again and you'll fucking die again on the same part only to realize that you're expected to be able to see this tiny ass little fucking hole in the middle of a goddamn wall while being chased at the same fucking time it really started to piss me the fuck off I beat this game in under six hours. Two of those hours were probably redoing the same fucking parts over and over and over and over again because I had no idea what the fuck I was supposed to do. I mean, just look at this shit. Hello, 
my Pokemon batteries. <laughs> Once more into the fray. Crazy bitch. All oh, right, in my dick. Well, this is quite the predicament, isn't it? Did you see the pull in the fence the first 30 times? Because I didn't. There are parts in this game where you'll go one way, an enemy will be there, so you're expected to know to run away and go back the same goddamn way you just came from because now all of a sudden, the door that was locked two fucking seconds ago is all of a sudden unlocked or open. What the fuck? It's nothing but running and hiding, 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 running and hiding for six goddamn hours. It's fun the first hour or so, running from enemies, but by the 30th time, it's just a pain in the ass! Half the time, the enemies are so fucking stupid, they don't even see you when you're standing right in front of them, too. Turn off the water. Now, for the worst part of the game, and the biggest slap in the ass that I've ever experienced with the game. This is up there with Destiny levels of bullshit storytelling. I finished this game, and I was left so goddamn confused that I had to look up a story explanation video on YouTube. I'm going to link the video that I watched below, and give 2x2 Gaming a shout out here for helping me figure out what the flying was going on at this game this whole game I'm walking around wondering why are the all these people fucked up why am I reliving moments from my childhood how the fuck did my wife get pregnant in five minutes and why are all these people in the middle of the woods ugly as shit in a porta potty on the 4th of July well according to 2x2 gaming unless you grab one certain document in the first half of the game you're gonna be left so confused for the rest of the game because apparently, they leave 90% of the goddamn storytelling to this one document that explains Murkoff, the people from the first game, have been running brain control experiments on these people using radio waves. It explains that the radio waves take your worst fear and amplifies it times a hundred or whatever. That's why one of the main protagonists 
Knox or whatever the fuck his name is, is obsessed with the Antichrist and has been killing a bunch of women and babies. And that's why everyone else there is out of their fucking mind. But you only get to know this information if you grab that one goddamn document in the middle of the goddamn woods under a fucking rock. Who the fuck knows? What? What kind of crazy ass stupid bullshit is that? Who the hell is expected to be able to figure out all that out if they don't grab that one goddamn document. Literally, the game will not make any sense unless you grab this one document because it completely explains the whole game. Without the docu document, it just seems like Ethan is randomly reliving his past. With the document, you realize that it's the most traumatic moment of his life and he's slowly being taken over by the mind control or something. Then that ending. What the fuck kind of ending is that? It would be like if Lord of the Rings then and right when Frodo puts the ring on and that's it. We're in Mordor. Oh, here goes the ring. Sam. No, don't do it. Oh, that's it. What the fuck? What else happens? Does Sam get the ring off? Do they destroy the ring? What the fuck happened to Smeagol? Is Aragorn going to fucking become king? Oh, we don't know. Because it's just going to end. What kind of bullshit is that? Born again. Achievement unlocked. The fuck? That's the end? Uh, I gotta say, that was disappointing. I will bet you ten fucking dollars that the DLC is going to be about one of two things. It's either going to be about what the hell his wife has been up to the whole time that Ethan's in the game, or it's going to pick up right from there because none of that shit actually happened. Because it's bullshit. Let's talk about the wife for a second, too. You randomly meet up with this woman two goddamn times in the middle of the woods. And sh we're just supposed to expect that she escaped these people? These crazy-ass Christian people abduct her at the beginning. And then all of a sudden, oh, there she is in the middle of the woods. Oh, hi, Ethan. How are you? Uh -huh. And then, oh, the heretics get her. Ten minutes fucking later, oh, hi, I escaped. <laughs> I don't know what I did. What the fuck? What the fuck? What kind of ah! the fuck? How did you get out? What the fuck kind of ah? Okay, let's calm down a little bit. Okay, so like I said, the game has its ups, and it also has major downs. Unless you are a huge fan of this series, like posters on your wall, for the love of God, please wait until it's on sale or until it's bundled with all the DLC that I guarantee you is going to come out this summer. All in all, this game in my eyes failed to live up to my expectations and it even failed to match the quality of the first game. Hell, even the DLC of the first game is better than this game. I'm going to give Outlast 2 a 6 out of 10 and honestly I'm only giving it that high of a score because of how much I liked the first game in the DLC. If this was a completely new game had nothing to do with Outlast, it would easily be a 5 out of 10. Please do not spend $30 on this game because it's honestly not worth it at this point in time. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next Under the Bun. The midwife's lament. The baby is coming. Ready the knife. The baby is coming. Knight's midwife. Mother to the enemy stained within. God's creation, saved with sin. Chorus, hallelujah, stay the storm. No longer must we wait, for come the dawn, the enemy is born to die in temple gate. The baby is growing, her belly swells. The babe is growing, sent from hell. Ezekiel waits, a sharpening his blade. Gather at the gate, we kneel and pray. Hallelujah.